harvesting timber today is much, much different than it was back at the turn of the century. Uh, it was not atypical for these big old growth redwood trees to be laid out and then using either oxens or later bulldozers, had them skid right down the drainages to the bottoms of the hills to where the mills were generally located. Today, it is much, much different. Uh, we think about every move that we make in the woods when we're laying out and engineering our harvesting. The way we practice selective harvesting, we try and thin fairly evenly through the various diameter classes and age classes in the stand. The nice thing about selective harvesting is when you go and make an entry in the forest, and once you're finished, you still have a standing forest. In redwood, um, we actually think that we're going to develop better wood qualities from logs that are grown using a kind of selection management because they won't grow as fast. Uh, the growth rings will be a little bit tighter because of that. Um, but the quality of wood that's derived from those logs should be better. In the case of both of our forests, we, when we purchased the lands, they had had a history of over-harvesting. So we decidedly made a move to cut much less than we were growing so that we could res restore the inventories back on these forest lands. Now there'll be some point at which a balance is achieved where we're harvesting and growing somewhere close to the same. We'll probably always grow a little bit more than we harvest. Every day that we come back to the forest, we've grown more wood on the forest than we've actually harvested. So our forests are going to mature and get older and grow bigger trees over time.